Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to VART 3435 uh, Spatial Practice. Uh, this is the Perspective, Space and 3D Computer Games section of the course that's being taken by me, Peter Nelson. So this week, because it's week one, the format will be a little different to our usual format later in the course. In most weeks, I will make a video lecture just like this that I will upload to YouTube and you can watch before the class and we will usually use class time for discussion, uh, troubleshooting, uh, sharing our creative works and so on. Most weeks I'll also make a technical demonstration on YouTube so anything that we're working on in software there'll always be a video that accompanies it so you can practice in your own time. So a little bit about me for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm a visual artist. I initially trained in painting and drawing and for about 10 years I made exhibitions in painting and drawing exclusively and now I work also in 3D modeling, uh, animation, 3D printing, uh, interactive game-based art and I'm also a researcher. I work as a computer game scholar and an art historian looking particularly at uh, landscapes and virtual worlds. If you want to learn any more about that, um, my website's on the screen and I'll put it in the description. Okay, so in this course, first of all, I want to talk to you about the art making skills that we're going to learn. This course has a practical and a theoretical component and I'm going to start with the practical and tell you, you know, what sort of things we'll be learning how to make. So we're going to work almost exclusively in the software Blender. Blender is a piece of 3D software, um, it's open source, it's free for you to download, and it works on both Mac and PC. Blender can make all sorts of things. Um, it works for uh, making components for computer games, making things for 3D printing, uh, animation, special effects, photorealistic uh, special effects, um, cartoon special effects, and also making high quality images. You can really do so many different things in this software and so in the course I'm going to give you an introduction to how to use the software and we will experiment with making some of these things ourselves. So when we go through Blender you will learn first of all our 3D modeling. You know how to work in the editor to make stuff. You know, 3D modeling sometimes is about highly geometric forms. Sometimes it's 3D sculpting where the, the 3D model is like a piece of clay that you push and pull around. There are so many different approaches to 3D modeling and we will uh, start with the basics and see how far we get. We will learn animation. Um, you know, once you've got a model, we can add colors to it. We can add lights. We can add textures and movement. And the 3D editing program becomes uh, uh, an artistic medium in itself to make really anything you can imagine. Uh, we will also look at rendering images and videos from 3D models. Um, so this image here uh, is something that I made for a friend this year. Um, his exhibition was cancelled because of COVID in Australia. So I remade the art gallery that he was exhibiting in, in Blender. Uh, so this image is not a photograph, it's completely fake. And this is, you know, something that 3D programs are really good at now. Um, making all sorts of different styles from animation to photorealism out of components purely from within our computer. Um, we will also look at some additional techniques like using sound to drive an animation. So in this animation here, where the buildings are jumping up and down, I didn't have to uh, show the, the software when to make the buildings rise up and fall, I connected a piece of music into Blender and the music was driving these buildings popping up and down. And we're going to connect some of these things that, um, that we're doing in our class to things that you'll do with Cedric and Daniel. So maybe you might make some interesting sound with Cedric that you can use to drive animations or maybe we'll make some interesting animation that you can use when you're editing uh, videos with uh, Daniel. Um, we might, if we have time, also look at making 360 degree images and video. So the image below, it's that same art gallery for a friend of mine 
And when you upload an image like this into a uh, Facebook has it, um, but also some specialized web browsers, you can have a, a 360 degree image, like a VR image. And we can also do it with video. So we can make uh, entirely fake VR worlds or 360 images also in Blender. And, you know, we might learn all sorts of other things. With software like this, you know, we'll work our way through the basics and then we'll see how far you want to take it and if there's anything in particular that you want to learn how to do. Okay, and in addition to the practical side of the course, we also have the theoretical side. Um, this is a level three course, so we always combine practice and theory. And so in my course, we will have three topics to do with the theme of space. Uh, the first topic we'll look at is fiction and procedural space. Procedural space is space made up by rules. So if you look at this image here, it's really just two rooms, one room that has these bookshelves in it and one room that's empty, and they're just alternating back and forth and back and forth to make this sort of infinite environment. And this infinite environment actually comes from a short story called uh, The Library by Jorge Luis Borges. And we might look at some of these uh, short stories, we'll, we'll read some science fiction and see how rule-based space can be a really interesting creative tool um, that lots of artists use over time. And also we can use to learn some procedural modeling, like this image that I made here in Blender. Um, and this is a, an illustration of Borges's library from another artist. And you can see here that the idea of repetition um, can, is very present in Borges's story. And repetition in Blender, looking back to this image here, it's something that computers do very, very well. Often when we're 3D modeling, we just make one thing and we tell the computer how to repeat it so we can make something very, very complicated out of um, a very simple idea. Um, and in fiction and, fiction and procedural space, we might also look at some of the stranger types of space that, um, that exist in mathematics and in fiction. And here we have the famous Tesseract four-dimensional cube. And we'll look at that a little bit also for, for a bit of fun. And another fictional space based on this idea of procedures and rules is uh, the film Interstellar. Um, this gif is, I don't know if you've seen the film by Christopher Nolan, but when the protagonist falls into the black hole, he ends up in this type of infinite space. And these are also the strange sort of repeating spaces that 3D editors are very, very good at making. Uh, the second topic in space will be utopia, the edge of fiction and reality. And when we're looking at the topic of utopia, first of all, we'll have a look at you know, what the word means. Utopia is a made up word by uh, an author called Thomas More. Utopia means somewhere between a good place and a no place. A utopia is a way of uh, thinking about how the world might be, but also thinking about worlds that are somehow impossible. So these images here come from some architectural ideas from the 1970s, and they were really looking at um, radical ways of restructuring the physical space around us and how that would restructure the type of world and the type of communities that we live in. And we'll uh, look at some really great texts that relate to this that might help for the theory essay that I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and the last part of our theory course is called, what does space look like? So some of you might be familiar with an image like this. This is a diagram of three point perspective, which is usually the most common perspective system used in 3D editors. But we'll also look at other types of space like uh, one point perspective, two point perspective, and parallel projection like oblique or isometric projection. The things that we find in Chinese scroll painting or in uh, real time strategy isometric computer games. There are lots of different ways of representing three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional screen. And we'll also look at some of the stranger aspects of space that um, occur because of how the camera works. In an image like this, we have what's called the vertigo effect, where the shape of the camera lens changes how we perceive space. And we will go into a little bit of theory here of, you know, what is the relationship between the camera lens and our eye? 
do some of the strange things that happen with cameras also happen with our eyes when we look at the world around us. And you know, some of these strange effects we can also directly bring over into Blender if you want to work with um, spatial distortions and um, you know, crazy stuff like this, we can definitely learn how to make images like this in 3D. Okay, so these are the three topics of the theory part of the course. Weeks one to four, we'll look at fiction and procedural space. Weeks five to six, we will look at utopia, the edge of fiction and reality. And weeks seven and eight, we will look at what does space look like. So the assessments. Um, we have five assessment components for this course, and I'm sure Cedric and Daniel will also explain some of this to you in week one as well. But basically we have the class experiments. So every week when we're doing exercises together in Blender, I'll be giving you certain challenges of creative works I want you to make. And at the end of the semester, um, we will uh, look at the creative works you've made. And later on, I'll tell you a little bit more specifically about what these experiments will be. Uh, then in week eight, we have a theory presentation. And in the theory presentation, you're going to uh, talk about the essay that you're going to write and also introduce the, the major project, the final project that you're planning to make. And this will be a great opportunity for all of us to, you know, share our ideas and, um, and it'll be great for Cedric, Daniel and I to get an idea of what you want to work on and we can help come up with um, ways to help you make those ideas even better. The theory essay is really based on the theory presentation, it's worth 15%. And we're going to do some writing exercises for you, so if you um, want to get better at your writing, this course should help you a lot. And then there's the final project, you know, the major creative work of the course, where you can take all the different skills you've learned between Cedric, Daniel and my own lessons and make a new creative work. And we'll discuss this in more detail in class. And then with most AVA courses, we have the professionalism grade. Okay, so my class experiments, um, the first one is going to be just an animation in Blender. I assume that none of you have used Blender before. If you've used it or used 3D programs before, that's great. Um, we can push forward a bit, a bit beyond what you already know. But if you've never used Blender before, that's absolutely fine. We're going to all make a first animation together. Uh, the second experiment is going to be in procedural modeling, making these sort of repeated um, spaces based on rules. And the third experiment will be extra techniques in animation, maybe using sound or maybe doing strange things with space or 360 images and so on. Um, so now how we're going to learn. Because you know most of us are aware that this semester will probably be a lot of online learning, hopefully not entirely, but we have to be prepared for this. So the way I teach is this. Um, as I said at the beginning, my lectures and practical exercises will all be on my YouTube channel. So before class, you can, you know, relax and watch the lecture so you'll be familiar with what we'll talk about. And then any practical exercise we do, I'll always make a tutorial for you where I'll go through the exercise step by step. So whether you're a fast learner or a slow learner, it shouldn't really matter. You can watch the video five times or you can get it right the first time. The YouTube videos are there to help you out. Um, sometimes we have a compulsory reading. There'll only be three major readings for my section that we're going to study very closely. Sometimes I'll suggest some short stories that it will be good to read, but you know our core readings will just be three. And um, I will introduce those the week before and I'll give you some quite close instructions on what we're going to do with these texts. And these texts should help you a lot with how you develop your essays for the theory presentation and the essay itself. Um, and then we'll have our live sessions. So every Tuesday, usually 9.30 till 12.30 p.m. Some of the classes might be a little bit longer. We'll go to 1.30 to complete the hours of the course. Usually it'll be 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. And primarily, we will meet in Zoom. We'll um, talk together. And then we'll use other software in collaboration with Zoom. Um, I like to work in Google Drive. Sometimes in Google Drive, we might want to make a shared document and type out our ideas together. Um, sometimes we'll use Miro. 
we'll have a, a virtual whiteboard and we'll draw our ideas together. And then sometimes we'll do a little bit of Blender in class also. But usually with Blender, I make sure that anything we do in class, I also record so that you can practice and learn in your own time. And then also I will set up obviously Moodle where we have our syllabus and our readings, but I'll also set up a chat on Discord. Um, for those of you who haven't used Discord, it's a very nice chat app and the benefit of it is that we can split our conversation into different topics. So um, you don't have to use your phone number and you can just uh, sign up to the Discord server and I'll have a chat for maybe problems with Blender, um, questions about the essay and so on. So we'll always have that instant communication if we need to solve problems. And if we're lucky, uh, we might do some teaching together. So, um, you know, if the situation with quarantine and so on improves, uh, we'll go into the computer labs and we might, you know, if we're lucky, get to install the works that we make physically. Okay, so um, for class today, we are, depending on time, we're going to play a world building game, which is sort of a mental exercise just for us to get to know one another and to start to think about how space can be a really interesting conceptual tool. And then we're going to start working in Blender together on our very first exercise where we're going to import a 3D model from the internet and we're going to start to make our own animation. Okay, so that concludes the introduction lecture. Um, some of you are probably watching this after class. Some of you are listening to this during class. Um, but uh, yeah, it's great to meet you all and I look forward to working with you this semester. Okay.